Jesus was baptized. Jesus was baptized. We know this, of course. It is baptism of our Lord Sunday. We just suffered through having water sprinkled on us. Why else would we go through that if he hadn't been baptized? Plus, it's mentioned in all four Gospels, one of those rare stories that is included in all of them. Sure, they all tell it a little differently, and admittedly, the Gospel of John only sort of alludes to it, but the point is basically the same in all of them. At some point, just before Jesus begins his public ministry, he goes to John the baptizer, because who else are you going to go to? And he asks to be baptized. Like so many others, people from all over the Judean countryside, people, all the people of Jerusalem, he goes and Jesus is baptized. The question is, why? Did he have sins to confess? Was he fond of the ritual? Was he just in need of a bath that particular day? Why was Jesus baptized? This is baptism of our Lord Sunday. It is a day in which we remember the baptism of Jesus so that we might fully, more fully remember our own, literally or figuratively. But if we're honest, most of the time we jump to the second part, trying to remember our own and forget the significance of the first. But it is significant, isn't it? Jesus was baptized. It's part of the reason why it's a sacrament of the church. We only have two in Methodism, baptism and communion. We'll do a little of both today. But it's a sacrament precisely because Jesus did it. That is, our baptism is because he was baptized. So what did his baptism mean? We don't usually think of that, do we? Do we even think of our own? Sure, we have some ideas. It does seem significant. On the one hand, some of us think of baptism as that moment in which we are finally cleansed of all of our sins and like those waters of creation moving from chaos to something that makes more sense. That is, we are here to be cleansed and made new. Only if that's the case, why was Jesus baptized? It sort of messes with our picture of a sinless Jesus. Maybe that's okay. On the other hand, some of us think of baptism as that moment in which we officially become a part of the family of God, in which we are marked in front of God and neighbor as a child of God, and we officially take our place, formally take our place as a child of God. Only if that's the case, was Jesus not a child of God before that moment? Do you see, at some point, they start to break down. Not that that stops us. Of course, that is some of the reason why we have our children baptized, why we are baptized ourselves, just to, you know, make sure. We want to care for their souls, make sure nothing untoward happens to them, so we might as well have them come in and be baptized, you know, just in case. Then again, there are others of us who come to baptism desperately needing that new life, desperately needing to let go of the sin that has built up in our lives and to be washed anew. That's part of the reason we use water. Only they're missing something, aren't they? See, baptism is a means of grace. It's not the only means of grace, and it's just a means of grace. And for us, that means it's one of the ways we can come to understand the grace of God. And whatever else it is, grace is a gift. We don't do anything to earn it, not even being baptized, and we can't do anything to take it away, not even not being baptized. That is, we are no more or less a child of God before our baptism than we are after it. There's nothing magic that happens when that water touches us. It is not a kind of churchy sorting hat that proudly announces our membership in the family of God. Gryffindor! No, like it or not, you are a child of God, baptized or not. 
That's the beauty and the scandal of grace. It is for all of us, young and old, black and white, gay and straight, male and female, rich and poor, broken and whole, Republican and Democrat, trans and cis and everyone beyond and between. That is, it is for baptized and unbaptized alike. It's just that when we finally recognize that grace and we understand the significance of it, the promise that underlies it, the promise that suddenly makes us aware that we matter not because of what we do, but because of who we are, then something in our soul stirs us to want to respond. Maybe some of us out there need the reminder this morning that you matter not because of what you do, but because of who you are. And once we truly recognize that grace in our life, we really have no choice but to find some way of responding in the Methodist system, in the Methodist theology. We even have a word for that. We call it sanctifying grace. That is the grace that makes us holy. That is, we take steps after recognizing that promise in our life to try to conform our lives to Christ. That is to take another step towards perfect love of God and neighbor. Maybe some of us are on that journey this morning. Baptism is a step on that journey. It's not the end and it's not the beginning. It's good to find a way to confess that which we have been carrying. And it's good to find a way to let it go so that we can embrace somebody else. But it's not the end. It's just a step. As most of us have discovered, we are no more perfect after our baptism than we are before it. So if baptism is not just about being washed clean of our sins or entering the family of God, then what is it? See, part of the reason both of those understandings fall short is because they miss the most important element in our baptism, and that is, of course, us. See, baptism is not just between us and God, it's between us and God, all of us. We are all included in the moment of baptism. It's not just about you, it's about y'all, or all y'all. I'm trying to get used to that these days. <laughs> The sacramental nature of baptism is inextricably tied to our community, to being gathered together. That's why we don't do baptisms in private except on those very rare and unusual circumstances because the whole point is the whole community coming together. So maybe we have our answer. Why was Jesus baptized? Because from the very beginning of his life to the very end, he was tied to the community in which he lived, and he wanted a way to show it, to stand before them and to say, I am a part of you, I'm with you, and just like we commit to the children who are baptized here or the adults who are baptized here, just as we do when we step to the communion table for that other sacrament which remembers our baptism, we commit to walk alongside one another so that should we stumble or should we fall, we will be there to help pick each other up again. Maybe that's why Jesus was baptized. And when he entered those waters and came out in the midst of community, he finally heard that voice from above, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The good news, friends, is that the same voice is speaking to us. It is the same voice whose breath spread out over creation in that beautiful founding myth of our faith that spread out over the waters. And it is the same voice that speaks to us today if we're willing to hear it. Can you hear it? You are my child the beloved, with you I am well pleased. Today we remember our baptism and recommit to keeping it holy in the only way we know how, together. May it be so.
Amen.